Hey everyone, my name is Ben Heisch, and this is going to be a practical review of the classic Canon A1. Now when I think of just a film SLR camera, the camera that just pops into my brain and I feel like pops into most people's brains is the Canon AE1. I feel like anytime you go to a garage sale or any kind of old camera shop, anything like that, they have AE1s. I feel like that's just like the camera that my high school probably had when they were teaching photography and stuff like that. It's a great camera and I've used one as well, but my personal favorite of those kind of like early SLR cameras is the Canon A1. Now it feels a little bit more, I don't know, slightly more modern and a little bit less classic than, you know, some of the, the old Leicas and even like my Nikon F2 because it's not a fully mechanical camera. It has some clearly obvious kind of like electronics in it, um, which is great, especially if you are learning or whatever. So it's not gonna have the feel and like the smoothness of some of those more classic cameras. But what I can tell you is it has a ton of features that are pretty amazing and definitely worth picking up if you haven't already thought of one. So right off the bat, um, the styling is great. It looks cool. It's a cool retro looking camera. I love the black. I mean, look at me. I think black fits really well with this whole aesthetic. You can pick up a 50 millimeter F 1.8. They also make a 1.4. I found this lens to be great. It's plenty sharp. It's very readily available. You can check Craigslist for FD mount lenses and there are plenty. There are even, you know, Canon L series FD lenses if you wanna go crazy. But the thing that really kind of sets this camera apart is it has aperture priority and it also has shutter priority if that's something you're into. Personally, for me, I love aperture priority for a lot of just like daily walk around, not serious work stuff. I just love to be able to toss it on aperture priority, trust the meter. Um, usually I set my meter at plus one, so everything is just overexposed by a stop. Color negative film has a ridiculous amount of flexibility in the highlights, so as long as I'm exposing well for my shadows. By doing that, I'm usually gonna end up with a really great image. Now, the thing that sets this thing apart on the inside as well is the view that you get inside the actual viewfinder here. The viewfinder is great. It has this little split prism kind of circle, you know, and then it splits and kind of like almost rangefindery style. Um, allows you to kind of line two things up so you know things are in focus. But then when you listen to the shutter, <laughs> it's not the greatest sound. What I will say is, you know, it gives you your f-stop in here and then it gives you the shutter speed that it's reading out at. It's a really like, you know, 70s, 80s kind of display in here with that very like old school digital clock look to it. But the thing about that is like some of my Leica cameras don't have as good of readings in here. Actually, all of my really Leica cameras don't give you your aperture and your shutter speed within the viewfinder. In that regard, it's great because you know what your shutter speed is because uh, it tells you in here, you know what your aperture is. It's all digitally kind of tossed in here, which makes this as a first camera or just a camera to bring along a great buy. Everything else about it is super solid, you know, lots of metal and honestly, like it's just a really, really great SLR to use. I love carrying it around. It's not too heavy. And again, I think just the biggest thing about this is just how readily available this whole kind of series is. I feel like I can always pick up FD lenses on Craigslist or probably Facebook Marketplace. And it's just kind of the camera that you are gonna probably find in your like grandpa's attic or something like that. And if you're coming from just like a point and shoot or an iPhone, or if this is kind of your first foray into film photography, I made a whole video about my recommendations for first film cameras. And this is definitely 
the one for a more you know interchangeable lens SLR camera. I highly recommend it. I feel like the features and everything like that are great. The price on these is still very inexpensive for what it is. And honestly, it's just a great camera. So thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions about this camera, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I honestly will try to get to every comment if it has a legit question about this. And if you are interested in film photography and cameras and that kind of stuff, I do a ton of videos like this. This is kind of my thing right now. So subscribing would be a great idea to see more videos like this. So thanks again, and I will see you on the next one.